Chào Ngọc and this is my partner, Vũ Tuấn Phong. Today it is a great honor for us to be here and welcome you to our project. In our project, we test the ability of phytolith in rice straw to capture carbon dioxide and we hope that it will be an idea for sustained management of rice straw as well as the reduction of greenhouse gases from paddy soil. As you can see in here, as you may know, Vietnam is an agriculture country and therefore we have a lot of paddy fields. In the paddy field, so the residue of us is the rice straw, however the rice straw is so abundant and we do not have a way to address it effectively. Therefore, in our research, we decide to choose the rice straw as our object. As you can see here, this is the rice. The major component of rice is phytolith, which is a kind of silica. Yeah, it covers in lid of silica, and inside it is the trace element. Phytolith covers about 10 to 15 percent of the rice straw. When we notice the composition of phytolith, which is contains silica and trace elements such as alkali metals, we remember of the rock forming silicate mineral, which is also consists of silicon compound and metal elements. We have known that silicate rock forming mineral is able to sequester carbon dioxide by increase of pH. So we pose the question that can phytolith also sequester carbon dioxide by silicate? Can phytolith also increase the pH? Moreover, with a higher dissolution rate than rock mineral, phytolith is um, a promising agent to reduce carbon dioxide. Okay, so to examine the interaction between uh, rice straw phytolith and uh, carbon dioxide, we follow the method this methodology. Uh, there are two parts. The first part is to prepare the sample by collecting the rice straw and to pre-treatment the rice straw to keep the phytolith. Uh, the second part is uh, to do the measurements. First, we uh, determine the uh, phytolith characteristics. Uh, next, uh, we measure the amount of carbon dioxide captured. And uh, finally, we uh, uh, measure the change in the sol solution chemistry, which include the pH, the theta potential, and the dissol phytolith dissolution amount. Uh, so we collect the, our sample, our restaurant sample in Hanoi and uh, to pre-treat the uh, restaurant phytolith, we follow this process. Uh, first, our restaurant was grounded and heat at 600 de Celsius degrees for two hours. Uh, next, it was washed with distilled water and finally dried at 100 Celsius degree. So, uh, um, this is our uh, uh, results in measuring the uh, rational phytolith characteristics. So, as you can see on the ADX uh, analysis, uh, uh, phytolith contains mainly uh, oxygen uh, and silicon. Also, there are an amount of uh, alkali metal, which is about 6%, and Carbon also appears in here, but it will not affect our well, process, later process. Uh, we also do the uh, FTIR analysis, and <coughs> as you can see on the uh, analysis, uh, silanone and silosan are the two main functional group of rice straw phytolith, which they, they are very important in determining the uh, rice straw phytolith behaviors. So, um, to um, give our, uh, to, to do the next measurement in our methodology, we set up this uh, system. system. Um, we, uh, uh, let, we, we let the same amount of carbon dioxide gas in gas through two tubes. One contain only distilled water and one contain the same amount of distilled water with uh, some phytolith. And the unreacted carbon dioxide is led to a sodium hydroxide solution with a phenol indicator. 
um, the discoloration of the sodium hydroxide solution is uh, used to uh, determine the ability to capture carbon dioxide of rational fatty lift. So uh, uh, the flask too, which contain, uh, which absorb the unreacted carbon dioxide of, from rational fatty lift, uh, solution, uh, discolor more slowly than the distilled water only one. Uh, so it proves that um, the unreacted carbon dioxide released from the rational fatalist suspension is less than that from distilled water. So, in order to find out the mechanism of capturing carbon dioxide, we come to determine the change in solution chemistry when we mix rice straw phytolith with water. We determine the pH, value, zeta potential, as well as phytolith dissolution amount. This is our experiment design. We design two systems. The first system is the non carbon dioxide aeration system, which is only contain uh, a tube that contains rice straw phytolith with water and we settle it under 8 hours. The second is the carbon dioxide system. We let the carbon dioxide flexes into the mixture between rice straw phytolith with water and we also settle it in 8 hours. This is our result. When we put carbon dioxide into the mixture between rice straw phytolith and water, we propose that it will decrease the pH, and it's true. As you can see in here during carbon dioxide aeration, the pH is lower than in non-carbon dioxide aeration. However, if you notice closely, we see a gradually increase in the pH amount from 5.2 to nearly 5.8, and we can explain the increase in pH volume during carbon dioxide aeration is because of the release of alkali metals from inside phytolith to the outside that have to that have increased the pH and sequester carbon dioxide. The pH has um, has many effects on phytolith characteristic, and one of that is phytolith surface charge. This is phytolith surface which is silica, this is the silano group, uh, however, when, there, when the solution is more baser, it will make the phytolith surface more negative, and this is our result. During non-carbon dioxide aeration, phytolith surface is very negative, however, during carbon dioxide aeration, the, mm, the phytolith charge is more positive, and we can explain that by the decrease in pH during carbon dioxide aeration have uh, is lack of the baser and therefore it creates less negative charge of phytolith surface. However, however, we can still that the phytolith surface charge during carbon dioxide aeration is still low and <coughs> therefore it is easy to capture the cations inside the solution to its surface. For example, the cation hydrogen and when it captures the cation hydrogen, it will have to increase the pH and sequester more carbon dioxide. From the previous slide, I have said more about the consequences of the increase in pH that led to the release of alkali metals inside phytolith, as this is the proof. As you can see in here, we determine the phytolith dissolution amount by determining the amount of silicon concentration in the solution. During carbon dioxide aeration, the silicon concentration saw an increase from 0 to nearly 18 mg per liter. During non carbon dioxide aeration, because the surface of phytolith is being, is very, is being weakened because they were more baser, so the silicon concentration in the solution in non carbon dioxide aeration is high, but we do not. Uh, uh, but I do not, we do not care about this, we just care about the silica concentration during carbon dioxide aeration. We explain the increase in silicon concentration during carbon dioxide aeration by the following. This is the structure of phytolith and when it is during its dissolution process, the silica is broken and therefore it releases alkali metal from inside and the release of alkali metals is the, will lead to the increase 
in pH and sequester more carbon dioxide. We have proposed two mechanisms of capturing carbon dioxide of vitalis. When we mix vitalis with water, this is the first step. The first step is the deprotonation of silicon group that have made vitalis surface more negative charge. And when it more negative charge, it can attack the cations on its surface. And one of the cations may be hydrogen, and it will lead to the increase in pH and sequester more carbon dioxide. The second mechanism is after the deprotonation of silanol, vitalis surface will be weakened. And when it weakens, it will lead to the dissolution process that release silicon in the form of monosilicic acid. And when the cover is broken, it will release more alkali metal ion from inside and also have to sequester more carbon dioxide. However, if you notice clearly the first step of the dissolution process this is the water atom. The negative side of the water atom is able to be attacked by the silicon atom. Therefore, we pose a question that can an ion like carbonate can be attacked to silicon atom too. And if this happens, we have the third mechanism of capturing carbon dioxide. You may consider why at first we post the about the silicate weathering process in here. What is the difference between vitalis and silicate dissolution process? Uh, the first is the similarity. They both increase the pH to sequester carbon dioxide. However, we notice um, a big difference between two process is that during silicate process, the more carbon dioxide being drawn in the reaction, the more carbon dioxide will be captured. However, during vitalis dissolution process, the more carbon dioxide will decrease the pH and help to stabilize vitally surface, therefore less alkali metal being released and less carbon dioxide being captured. We hope that uh, the silicate weathering process has been very well known. However, vitally, which we call um, biogenic silica, have been known for its ability to capture carbon dioxide. Therefore, we hope that in our research, we can find out many important things about the weather, the dissolution process of the two silica, and maybe it will be very important to reduce the carbon dioxide. Well, so uh, from everything that we, every results that we have got, we conclude that uh, by, release, by releasing alkali metals, ions, and attracting uh, hydrogen into its uh, rush of the surface, uh, it is able, it can increase the pH and therefore suppress carbon dioxide. So uh, for the future plans, there's a lot of things to tell. Um, since uh, we have not done a lot in experimenting, we want to uh, do our experiment, but in a, wide, a, a wider range of uh, numbers. Of, uh, of the ratio. Yeah variation and also we want to uh, examine other uh, possible hypotheses on the interaction between phytolith and carbon dioxide uh, to quantify the amount of carbon dioxide captured is also one uh, important note and uh, we lastly we want to uh, uh, um, examine the uh, possibility to use pressure phytolith as a fertilizer to paddy soil and as uh, biochar products as um, sustainable and environmentally environmental friendly uh, fertilizer to soil to reduce carbon dioxide emitted from the soil. So uh, thank you for your attention. <laughs>